What up? I'm his friend. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. As I've said, Barcelona is an all-inclusive resort, so there was no shortage of food or alcohol. Breakfast and lunch were served buffet style, but for dinner, you had the option to eat at one of their specialty restaurants. And on this night, we had hibachi, and it was awesome. Hilton does have a poker room, but no games going on right now. Let's go to the Rio, Ryu, see what's going on over there. If there's nothing happening over there, just gonna go back to Holiday Inn, which is uh, a few hotels over. So literally a month and a half later, I'm gonna break down these hands for you guys from Aruba. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. So I didn't think I was gonna have the footage or the notes for this, but in the actual hand recording, I was really smart at the time, I talked into the microphone what the hands were, what the cards were on the flop, turn, river, what the bets were, and I have the breakdown of uh, what went on. So, nevertheless, here we go. Day three, Aruba trip. Not day three, but session three. We look down at pocket jacks. We are in middle position, and we raise to $25. Uh, we only get one caller from early position and the limpers fold. So we're heads up to the flop. The flop comes, five of clubs, eight of clubs, three of spades. Um, he makes a $10 bet, a little small $10 bet into a $45, $50 pot. I make it 25, I wanna see where I'm at. And he calls it. The turn comes and it's another five. And this time he Leads out again. He didn't check raise me. He didn't do anything too crazy. So uh, I imagine his hand's not that strong. If he did have a five, I imagine he'd want to check, have me bet this, and then put in a raise. Or maybe he was trying to get a little bit of value out of this, but I still think I'm ahead with my holding. Um, he bets out $25. Still looks pretty, pretty safe unless he has a five. It's only $25. We make the call. The river comes and it is a queen of diamonds. Um, he leads out again for $25. I don't see any reason why we should fold this. This player has been pretty loose before, earlier on the night, and uh, I'm not giving him too much credit. I make the call and he tables king high. <laughs> king high, we take down that pot. I never know what he has, so I, I can't bet or raise or nothing. <laughs> oh my god. It's like maybe he hit a five. I don't know. Queen on the river? Could have hit it. So I was checking the handbook on what hands to play pre flop, and this was actually on the list. It was up there. Pocket Kings, under the gun. We raise it to $20, folds around to someone in late position, and he calls heads up to the flop. 
Flop comes and it is eight of clubs, two of spades, queen of diamonds. No need to be tricky with this hand. I put in a continuation bet of $30 and he makes the call. I'm putting him on a pair at least. Could have overcards maybe. Ace king, unlikely ace king, but maybe ace queen at this point. King queen's unlikely, maybe queen jack. But I think we're ahead still and we see a turn. The turn brings another queen and not the best card for us. We had any type of queen, now we're behind, but I want to find out where we are. I put in a, another bet. I choose a rather small sizing for this. I bet $35 and he calls. So I think if he had a queen in this spot with the draw on board, I think he would want to try to get some value out of this. Maybe push me off the hand, put in a raise. Uh, so I, at this point, I don't put him on a queen but I'm still wary of it, and we go to the river. The river is another not so great card. The river brings an ace. Um, not just any ace, it's the ace of spades. So now everything got there. The queen beats us, an ace beats us, any kind of flush draw beats us, and at this point, we should probably check this and call a bet if there's a bet, but what do I do? I put in a bet. <laughs> I bet. What did I bet? I gotta watch this. What did I bet? Shut up, Professor Priest. I lost. <laughs> Look, I even said I lost. I bet 50 bucks. All right. So I bet 50 dollars. And looking back on this, given that board, and I guess the range of hands that I would be playing, and versus what he would be playing, I would like a check on this river. Because if he raises, I'm not sure what to do. I don't beat very much, so I'm very exploitable in this position. If he had raised me, if he was able to outplay me, I, I probably would have oh laid this hand God, down with that board. I, so, for sure had I put $50 in, he makes the call, and I've got to think that I'm behind here. So I flip my hand over because he made the call. And to our surprise, it holds up. Take down that pot. Uh, we're running really good. All right, we look down at a suited ace, ace nine of clubs. Not the best hand, we're in the middle position. There hasn't been a whole lot of raising pre-flop, so I think we can see a flop pretty cheap. I put in a $5 bet, a uh, few callers, and we go five ways for the flop. Like I said, no raises. So we see a cheap flop, and the flop is pretty decent. Brings two clubs, but it's a paired board, so we have to be cautious of that. The flop comes three, comes three, five, five. So we have the flush draw, we have two over cards. Um, just have to be careful of that five, but we still have outs to draw to the better hand if we are behind, um, but we're not gonna get too out of line. Someone in early position bets $25. The guy to my right calls $25. They're both rather short stacked, but you know, I, I decided to make the $25 call anyways. Chance to make the flush and there's two uh, people in the hand, so I'm looking at implied odds. If it was just the early position guy that bet 25 into a $25 pot, probably just let this go here. But we call and we see a turn. The turn comes and it's the seven of clubs. We complete the ace high flush. We don't have the nuts, but you know, the Early position guy only has like $115, $120 in front of him. The other guy to my right only has like 80 or 90 in front of him. So, you know, if they have, if they have the full house already, more power to them, I'm gonna pay them off. The early position guy checks, the guy to my right checks, and I make a bet where I'm trying to get a little bit of value out of this. I bet $50, the early position guy shoves all in, the other guy shoves all in, and it's an easy call at this point. Make the call, and we see a river. The river comes, and it was a blank. Jack of hearts on the river, doesn't change anything. I gotta dodge it, Jack five. Early position guy, small blind, he tables, ace, three, off suit. He shoved all in $115 with a pair of threes. Got on my right had ace five, so there was more merit in his shove. He had uh, the five, he had redraws to the full house, plus he had amazing pot obstacle. And we scooped that pot. 
Final pot of the night. Um, this was an amazing session. Only played an hour and a half, I think. Um, I, gotta look, I gotta check my notes, and it was the best night so far in Aruba. Uh, I said I was going to combine the last two Aruba vlogs, but uh, turns out I had all the notes for day three, so I was able to talk about that. Day four, there were a lot of interesting hands, so uh, I do want to talk about them. Uh, one of them where I thought I was ahead, I was actually maybe behind. I'll have to subscribe and find out what happened on day four. So that'll be the final Aruba vlog. I've got at least four or five other vlogs for back in Connecticut at Foxwoods. Played sessions in April, played sessions in May. I'm about to go downstairs right now to play some 2-5 No Limit. Um, it's May 11th. And uh, guys, sorry for my absence. I've been just so crazy, but I've got this new laptop here. Hopefully I can start editing vlogs more frequently and get the content out there for you guys. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, subscribe to the channel or you're gonna get cancer. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but please do subscribe to the channel, get notifications, and thank you for watching, guys. Peace.